Um, our next speaker is Martin Curley from Intel, Intel Labs Europe. Now, I want to first of all acknowledge and thank Intel Labs for their funding or co-funding of this initiative here. And we're working very closely as a city with Intel Labs on a number of fronts. And a major event that Martin is leading on, which involves the European Commission and Trinity and ourselves, will be the Innovation 2.0 event uh, conference here in Dublin in May, which you're all invited back to. Uh, and that's being held under the Irish Presidency. So just to say our ongoing collaboration with Intel Labs is something of particular importance for the city of Dublin. Now, Martin is the Vice President uh, at Intel Corporation and Director of Intel Labs Europe, uh, which is the company's network of more than 40 research labs and development centers and open innovation collaborators spanning the European region and including our sister city of Barcelona that is here today. He also serves as a senior principal engineer at Intel Labs Europe and he's charged with helping to advance both Intel research and Europe's ability to compete in the global society. And Martin leads the Intel's research and innovation engagement with the European Commission and the broader European Union research ecosystem. And he currently chairs the European Union's Open Innovation Strategy and Policy Group, which is an industry-led group advising on strategic priorities for open and service innovation. So I'd like to hand the floor now to Professor Martin Curley of Intel. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> so good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good, excellent. So uh, we have 10 minutes, and uh, so I'm going to give you a, a drive-by shooting of this topic, growing together towards sustainable connected cities. Just a word on Intel. We're the world's largest semiconductor manufacturing company. Annual revenues of about $55 billion. We have a vision that extends beyond making profit. Uh, so our vision is that this decade we'll create and extend computing technology to connect and enrich the lives of everybody on the planet. And I think that's quite noble and it's a big opportunity. Many of you will be familiar with C.K. Prahalad's book, The Fortune at the Bottom of the Pyramid, and the idea that we can actually do good and be profitable at the same time. At the core of our vision, and of the future is the notion of shared value. Michael Porter has been writing about this for the last number of years, the idea that we could reconceive the intersection between corporate performance and society. Shared value is crucially important, but equally actually underpinning that is that we have a shared vision. And at the end of the talk, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, how we're working with Dublin and with many other stakeholders actually to create a shared vision and a shared value proposition for our future cities. The megatrends that we're seeing, we see three megatrends, uh, digital transformations and Intel and many of our collaborators and our partners in our ecosystem are creating that and Moore's Law is at the core of that. And every 18 months or so, computing power is doubling and that's being delivered at less or equal cost. We all know that sustainability is a megatrend. It's a new paradigm. We have to embrace it. We're on track as a global society to be consuming 1.5 Earth's worth of resources by 2050. That's not sustainable. One of the big opportunities, of course, is to use IT to actually substitute for or dematerialize lots of uh, activities in, in our modern economy and society. But probably the biggest trend that we're seeing is mass collaboration and the European Internet Foundation, and this ties very much into Sally's point around collaboration. The European Internet Foundation is a collection of forward-looking MEPs. They published an excellent report a couple of years ago called The Digital World in 2025. And of all the trends that they saw, they saw that mass collaboration is the single most uh, dominant paradigm that will shape actually the next couple of decades for Europe and actually indeed our global society. And how can we take advantage of this in terms of building cities in the future that are smart, safe and sustainable? And we think cities are really at the nexus of these three trends. How do we formalize and how do we harness the power of public-private partnership or public-private collaboration, as Sonny mentioned? Uh, well, the whole idea of triple helix innovation or what's evolving to be quadruple helix innovation is at the core of this. Henry Ektovitz, who's a professor at Haidster in Stanford, has been talking about this, and this concept has been evolved. But the, the idea is that we can work together, governments, industry, academia, and citizens to actually drive and create structural benefits and structural innovations that could go, go well beyond the scope of what any one organization can achieve. And you know, I think Simon presented actually a, a governance uh, methodology and model which I think is, is very effective. 
but probably even more powerful is where you actually create a shared vision that everybody marches to or actually you know, commits to. So we, we think the whole idea of quadruple helix innovation is, is hugely important, and we're employing that model um, in cities like London and in Dublin. So specifically to talk about London for a moment, we're working with Imperial College, with UCL, the Greater London Authority, and with the full support of the UK government to actually make London an exemplar of what a smart, sustainable um, uh, city should be and, and could be. But moving back home here to, to Dublin, there is a shared vision that's evolving between Dublin City, Intel Labs Europe, other technology partners, academia, and most importantly, citizens. What should our sustainable connected city look like? And, and recently, we had a launch of this with the, the Irish Innovation Minister, Nisha Murray, who's the Lord Mayor of Dublin, and many of you will, will met. And I think it's a huge advantage to a city like Dublin to, that you have a Lord Mayor, that we have a Lord Mayor who's a digital native and is equally uh, conversant in technology terms, um, like waterfall models, like Scrum, as he is with sort of all of the, the, the regular vocabulary that a Lord Mayor leads or needs, and we're working, of course, with, with Trinity College as well. Uh, what we want to do is to think about the innovation trajectory for cities like Dublin. Most cities uh, around the world are actually on what we call sustaining innovation trajectories. So there are incremental innovations that uh, is at work. In business, the big successes come where you actually are able to introduce a disruptive innovation. Clay Christensen, a Harvard professor, introduced this term initially where you have a initially inferior, lower cost technology that eventually completely displaces an in incumbent. And what we're trying to do with Dublin and with other cities around the world is to find those disruptive technologies that are absolutely game changers, uh, that create new services, deliver much more resource efficiency, and everybody wins. We're also looking to deploy new processes, new technology. So on the right-hand curve that I'm showing here, as you traverse to the right, we're moving from data technologies, data practices, to best practices, best technologies, and actually, in fact, inventing new processes and new technologies together. And what we see is if we can do this, we can improve the level of services, improve resource efficiencies, and ultimately quality um, of life. So the collaboration objectives with the city of Dublin are first to set Dublin truly apart, and you know, really pleased to hear you know, Sally's report out in terms of Dublin being, being, being number uh, three on the index. But we want to co-develop and test citizen-centric services, one of the big changes in innovation, and Peter mentioned the Innovation 2.0 conference. One of the big things that's happened in the last 10 years is how much innovation is coming from the users or co-created with the users. So we, we want to co-create services um, with citizens that deliver better service, are, are, are much more efficient and improve quality of life. And Dublin is very small relative to, say, a, a London or a Tokyo or a Beijing. And we think there's an opportunity to innovate very quickly in Dublin, develop new solutions, and then create design patterns that you know, can enable rapid adoption of these solutions um, around the world. Uh, I think something that's truly innovative in Dublin is the Digital Dublin uh, Leadership Forum that the Lord Mayor, City Manager, and Peter Finnegan have established. And this is a group of leaders from the quadruple helix innovation, from the city, from the government, from business, from academia, and including citizens that are coming together to actually create, not just create a new vision for Dublin, but actually making it real. And um, as you look forward, one of the most important ways of actually achieving consistent collaboration is actually building roadmaps. So this is one, of, uh, one example of a, a roadmap, we call this the capability maturity framework, that we're using uh, to actually jointly create the future. And uh, essentially, you know, this basically tells a story of how we can move from sort of low level maturity um, to actually much higher level uh, maturity, ultimately with the, with the benefits of better quality of life, much more prosperous city, better services and, and, and increasing um, resource efficiency. So we have a team from Intel, the Innovation Value Institute, Dublin City, and other stakeholders actually working to, to construct this model. And if I had more time, this, is a, this actually goes much deeper and we're building maturity curves around six urban themes, but perhaps we could, we could get to that in, in, in the panel. But to give one simple example of how we make this real, uh, we're working with the city and with Trinity College Dublin to actually establish a large scale or urban, urban sensing platform. So there are some fixed sensing and we've mounted an ambient intelligence platform, a number of um, locations around Dublin. There is mobile sensing 
uh, opportunistic sensing opportunities using vehicles that are traversing the city. And of course, the big opportunity is participatory sensing where citizens are observing or actually their devices like a mobile phone are actually reporting information in, in, in real time. And this all comes together in a platform called CityWatch. And CityWatch, we have involvement from citizens at both at two levels here. First, at the design phase, we've been running, running workshops together with the city to actually design this new platform, CityWatch. Um, when it transitions from design actually into an operational platform, the platform is completely dependent on uh, citizen um, engagement. And unfortunately, don't have time to, to walk through a scenario. But the broader collaboration with Dublin and the development of platforms like CityWatch enables you know, a few things, few things that are, I think are very important. The idea of collaborative intelligence, where we can actually collaborate together uh, to create a future. We, of course, will, 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 will innovate, but that's not the end goal. The end goal is better services, better quality of life, insured resource efficiencies, new jobs, new exports. And you know, coming back to the, the, the central theme, poverty reduction. So let me uh, stop there and thank you for your attention. And again, just to you know, commend Dublin City and UNDP for you know, organizing. I know this was a heavy lift and it's, it's been a fantastic conference so far and we're really looking forward to actually traversing or going on the journey beyond the conference. So thanks for your attention.